Okay, so here we've got this question here. We want to find the inverse. You swap your x's and your y's. x minus 2 over 2 is equal to 5y. Then once you've got it like this, we can go, all right, log of base 5 of x minus 2 over 2 is equal to y. Uh, and there it is. There's our inverse. So now we can go, all right, the inverse is going to be, now we're going to figure out the domain and range. Again, a couple of different ways you can do this. You can look at this and you can say, well, where will this thing, um, well, let's think about it. Let's come over here. I've got x minus 2 over 2, right? Don't write this down. Let's just think about this. We know that this has to be greater than 0, right? Because my argument can't be 0 or negative. Well, hopefully you can just kind of pick up straight away. Well, that just means that x minus 2 has to be greater than 0. x minus 2 has to be greater than 0, which means x is, has to be greater than 2. Because obviously, if you were to put, I don't know, 1 into this, 1 minus 2 is going to give you overall a negative number. Uh, this divided by 2 really doesn't change anything. Whether or not this is positive or negative is determined by the numerator. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would just be going, all right, this is the same as x minus 2 minus 2 over 2, which is the same as 1. That, and then you can rearrange it. But I kind of find that a bit of a silly way to do it. I think this way is just more sensical. Sensical? Is that a word? Common sensical. I don't think that's a word either. Um, this is going to be 2 to infinity because it's greater than 2. 2 all real numbers. That's my codomain. It's always all real numbers. And then this, 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 this. Then this is going to be log of base 5 of x minus 2 over 2. And there it is right there. Uh, now, the other thing that we have to do here is state the range of this thing. And this is where it's probably important that we just kind of think about what the domain and range of the original is. So let's do that. Let's come over here and let's think about what's the domain of the original and what's the range of the original. Okay, so what is the domain of the original here? It's just going to be all real numbers because as you can see, you know, what I'm dealing with here is shifted two up. It's got some sort of dilation happening here, but we really don't care about that. It's just going to look like that. My range is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 2 to infinity because this is y is equal to 2. So it's 2 up, 2 to infinity, not including 2. So now when we try to figure out the domain of the inverse and the range of the inverse, what is that going to be? All right, well, this is going to be 2 to infinity, and this is going to be all real numbers because we know that they just swap. That's a crazy looking arrow. Um, and again, if we kind of think about what this looks like, by looking at what we've drawn here, well, what is this going to look like? And this might be a good chance to use our CAS here. Uh, let's get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, let's go tab, let's go control log, let's go a base of five, and then this, x minus two, close brackets, divided by two. There it is. Uh, so that's what it's going to look like. And, and sure enough, what this is telling me is that I have an asymptote here at uh, x is equal to 2. It's going to look like that. So as you can see, my domain is 2 to infinity, not including 2, and then my range is all real numbers. Perfect. Uh, and that's how that one works. So you can it's kind of pick your poison of how you want to do this. Uh, as you can see, we've figured out the domain twice, and I just want to show you the different ways that that works. All right, I'll see you in the next one.